Howdy, greetings from the Palatial Ranch Ferry Studio. Fans blowing in the background because this summer, it's hot. Sorry, get over it. So I had one of my subscribers named Brody who suggested uh, a video like, how sharp is sharp enough? I mean, you could sharpen yourself to death and we're trying to do find some way to possibly measure, give us an idea of what sharp might be compared to other levels of sharpness. So I'm gonna to try to answer that question. Stay tuned. So this is actually, there was more discussion behind this, but it's kind of like, got a pretty good edge. What's a super slick edge? What does a razor sharp edge look like? And how do we know what to look for? This is a strop. And these things will take broadheads with really good steel to the next level. This happens to be the Ranch Ferry Strop. It's in the Ranch Ferry store. I'm a bloody capitalist. So if you'd like to get a ranch ferry strop, thanks for your business. This is really the greatest finishing tool you can do, you can get to really take them from, you know, really good to fantastic. And this thing is because of Big Mike Tanaka. Uh, one of the things I was a little stubborn on when he was helping me learn to sharpen I didn't really think a stupid piece of leather on a board would matter at all until I learned to do it. I have a full video on my channel, How to Strop Broadheads. So go to that, card will pop up here. I'll leave it in the description for you to go there to go into more detail on using a strop. I also have a video on using the WorkSharp Precision Adjust on my channel to get the bevel set. So one of the tricks to getting a really sharp edge, there's a lot of jigs, there's like, duh, try to learn to freehand and that thing. When I found this, and I bought this thing about six months ago before I did the video and worked to deal with WorkSharp to sell these gizmos, I was looking for something that was really pretty simple, straightforward and constantly consistent. And that thing, is legit. Plus it'll sharpen knives. It's multi, it's actually a knife sharpener. So if you buy that, you're not getting just a broadhead sharpener. You're getting a sharpener for a multitude of tools. And then you can sharpen broadheads on it. Once you get that bevel set consistent, Brody's question was, okay, I got the bevel set, but what's really, really sharp? So I've got three broadheads here. This one's actually one of, they're all, they're all the same broadhead. They're the Ranch Ferry broadhead. So they happen to be a machine, one, you know, one piece, 200 grain broadhead. This one's got chunks in it because, uh, well, we killed something with it. And it is broadhead number one. And it is my pretty darn sharp. And since we've shot, uh, my son shot, Caleb shot two pigs with this. It's been in the dirt twice, you know, after being shot through pigs and we resharpened it but I've got it to the point that it's pretty darn sharp intentionally. I didn't get it all the way back to perfect, or at least what I consider hunting sharp, but it would kill. So it's pretty darn sharp. Number two is really pretty good sharp. And then number three has a nice slick edge. You can see it shining real good. By the way, you see that shine right there? That does not mean it's sharp. That means that you've been really consistent. Generally speaking, if it's that shiny, well, let's see if I can get the shine again. You've got a perfectly flat edge and it's gonna be sharp, but it doesn't mean it's sharp. This one has been run on the precision adjust and then I have stropped it and it is my A plus sharp broadhead. I was on a podcast with Aaron Snyder and this is his concept, not mine. And I thought it was really, really pretty brilliant. And he described aero systems as, if you have like an A plus system, 
and you hit something hard, something goes weird, you clip a branch on the way to the target, right? It erodes to a certain level. So let's say an A plus system starts at A plus, super sharp, durable broadhead, aeroflight's good, all that stuff. And then by whatever between launch and impact or at impact, it erodes to a B, okay? So if you start with A plus and it erodes to a B, you've got a B arrow that keeps going. If you start with a B plus arrow and B plus sharpness and it erodes the same, you're going to a C minus C kind of deal. So in your head and you think about that, if your sharpness is so-so, broadheads only do two things at impact. They either stay in their static state, which means whatever sharpness level you have applied to them, they will remain sharp, or they go downhill in sharpness and dull. They do not get sharper. It, it is impossible. There's no sharpening mechanism in an animal that's gonna make it sharper. So what I'm gonna show here, it's gonna get a little clunky because I gotta put the camera in front of me and my hand's gonna be in the way. So it's gonna be a little clunky, so I apologize. It's just hard to, it's hard to do that or do this and show it and be super neat. But I'm gonna show you the way that these three broadheads cut through paper and some of the, they seem like minute differences, but they're actually pretty, well, they're not pretty significant. They are quite significant because you're gonna see a, you know, a B, high B plus A, low A broadheads, and then you're gonna see an A plus, you know, cut. And that is going to increase your lethality in the- Okay, we have broadhead one, broadhead two, and broadhead three. You see it's nice and shiny. This is paper from one of the magazines that gets sent to you. I think this is Uline. They've got like all kind of office materials or stuff. I like to use this more than I like to use uh, regular paper from like a printer, but it, it would be fine. Your results will be very similar and you'll be able to feel the difference. So we're gonna take broadhead one and we're gonna cut the paper here. And you can see it's dragging a little bit, right? Feels pretty sharp. <laughs> it's just not a good example. One thing that's interesting is that right there, uh, right there, that is paper. See how it wiped off? That was little bits of the paper when it was tearing, catching in a pretty sharp broadhead that will almost pull hair, but it was grabbing the fibers because paper's not slick. It's a, it's actually fibers and see the, uh, that's a tear, but you can see the hairs in there. So that would happen internally on an animal. It would catch and fill up with fat and stuff. Let me see if I can get that again. Now see how it cuts good this time? cheats me there's a little bit back here right there all right hang on there's that see how that wiped off that is little tiny pieces of steel that are rough on the edge and what will happen is in an animal when it goes through it will grab tissue and fat and fill up the edge and that will decrease the cutting ability because it's now good it's caught broadhead two a little better edge this would be an a edge i think yeah that's pretty solid a couple of little catches in it just needs to be stropped a little bit we don't see a little bit of paper there see how see how it goes away it's still got a little bit of an edge a burr. Basically, you need to get those off of there. But it cuts pretty good, right? I'm having to work and saw a little bit, but it cuts pretty good. I don't see any hair picked up that, any of the fibers picked up that time. Okay. And this is number three that I've actually stropped out. 
on the ranch raised drop and get on the paper. And it's just smooth as glass. It cuts nice and clean, there's nothing there. So that's the difference between like a B plus sharpness that'll still probably pull hair, B plus A, and then A plus plus would be the third one, that clean cut. So my third example is, or my final example, is I did this earlier on this piece of paper and it really showed. So there's number one, you see how jagged this is? How it's bouncing around? That's where it's just catching on the teeth and stuff on the burr that's left on there, it hadn't been stropped out. Number two is cleaner looking, okay? But then it has a little chunk there, okay? And then the third one is slick as glass. It's got little bumps in it from the single level, but look how clean that is compared to a little bit of bumps there. And then we see a lot of jagged da -da 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 chatter on that one. We saw that on this one too. See, it's kind of bumpy, a little bit of ragged. And then that's number three. Look how clean that is. So that's how I judge using paper so you don't shave your body clean. And that is going to increase your lethality in the thinness of the cuts, the depth of the cuts, and actually there's a reactive process within your system, all animals, that when damage occurs to the organs of the animals, your body's response is not as extreme when the cuts are super clean, it's gonna react. I mentioned blood flows more freely. The cuts are cleaner. There's no ragged edges on the edge of the arteries and veins, which allow the, there's like, fix a flat in your blood. Okay, and the minute that something's cut, they send the fix a flat. If there's edges on the side of, of the uh, arteries or veins, it's like cutting a piece of PVC clean with cutters or hack, hacksawing it. Okay, when you hacksaw it, it's got all that hair on the edges and the fix a flat inside your blood can grab onto those little teeth on the sides and start sealing it off. Okay. If it's cut perfectly clean, like with PVC cutters, there's nothing to grab onto and the blood keeps going. It eventually has a way to tie it together. That's a very deep discussion about your body's response there. It doesn't matter for this discussion. Just keep that image in your head of hacksaw and PVC and all the stuff on the side. Allows it to clamp off faster and start building tissues around there. Now, if you cut a big artery, it's over, okay? So some of this is a little bit minutia. But think back to what Snyder said, A plus to B, B plus to C, you want your broadheads to be as sharp as possible. And then final comment, I've said this on a lot of videos, arteries are semi-muscular, they're really pretty durable, and you'd be better off thinking about them as a piece of al dente pasta that's three, you know, three quarters cooked, but not quite there, not quite what you want when you're eating it than you would just a the side of a of a balloon that's deflated so if the broadhead hits something hard on the outside of the animal runs through some sand and dulls and it was dullish and dulls further those arteries can roll right over the top of the broadhead reducing your lethality trust me I <laughs> have done a lot of needle sticks. And when you're trying to draw arterial blood gas out of this wrist here, hello, everybody who's tried that. Sometimes the artery, you'll take a needle that's not very big and go like this and the artery just rolls out. You can see it. You go to press on it and it just rolls out of the way and your patient isn't thrilled with your skills. All right, so I hope that was it's not really easy to see and then until you get this do this with your own hands and look at the paper and you can't feel what i can feel but that number three head 
the really A++ one, is goes through the paper and it's just slick and smooth. And the other ones just grab a little bit. Listen to me, all three of them heads sharpened like that will kill. So maybe we're splitting hairs here. But for all the sitting around, gyrating, all the prep time, and I'm not making fun of everybody, but there's, you know, you make, you're trying to figure out where you're gonna go hunting, you shoot your reps, you get your warm ups, you get your sight tape zeroed out to your max distance. There's a lot of all these details that we take on to get ready for hunting season, which is short. And to overlook this piece and not try to learn to sharpen doesn't make very much sense to me. From a practical standpoint, and I'll tell you why, the last thing that will happen on your hunt is that the broadhead will hit your intended target and go through it. Everything else, your camouflage and your freaking underwear that matches your uh, stabilizer, your surprise release, <laughs> whatever the hell those are. All that stuff goes out the window, all of it. If the broadhead fails, this is all part of Dr. Ed's rule number one, structural integrity. The structural integrity of the edge is also part of structural integrity. Most people think about structural integrity and think about bending, breaking, you know, coming apart, etc. If the edge cannot handle impact and does not go through the internal organs as sharp as it possibly could be, you are not helping your bow hunting experience and you are decreasing your lethality. The last thing that happens on a bow hunt and the goal of all the gyrating for months and months on end and all the prep time and all that stuff is to slam the broadhead into your intended target animal and put them down in a hurry. And if this is not taken care of, if you just overlook this part, all that prep could go out the window for spending a couple of hours over time while you're doing all this stuff, learning how to sharpen broadheads and buying broadheads that can handle impact and acquiring your critter. That is the only goal in bow hunting. You can hunt in a Speedo but if you have a great arrow system and they're super sharp and you hit them in the right spot and it goes all the way through them, they're gonna die and your Speedo's gonna work. But if you have the full get up, fancy arrows that match all your stuff, you got eye patch, I mean, you got all the stuff. $10,000 sights that do the laser distance for you, surprise release, I mean, you got all the coolest stuff ever. All your friends say, wow, you got a surprise release, man, you're really good. And the broadhead fails at impact, well, all that other stuff goes out the window. You're done. All right, that's the Rance Ferry. Hey, thanks for watching. You could uh, hit subscribe, I guess. Kind of don't care if you do, but might be smart. Might learn something. I'm trying to help people here. My goal on this channel is not for me to kill stuff. My goal on this channel is to study lethality, study what Dr. Ed Ashby talked about, give you the information, and let you be successful. So this fall, find me on Instagram. Ironically, it's Ranch Ferry. Click on that thing, get on my Instagram page, and then send me pictures this fall. And if you send me pictures in your story, I'll post them up on my Instagram because I don't care about me killing stuff. I care about you killing stuff. It's way cooler to hear and see all the successful people. That's my goal. Thanks for watching.